The first thing you're going to do when you get your clay is divide a piece off for the head of your bison. And then you're going to take the rest of it and you're going to use the palm of your hand um, or roll it on the table to try to get it into less of a square rectangular shape. So hopefully your clay is not too terribly hard. But if you look at the body shape of a bison, they kind of have almost a cheese wedge type shape. They definitely have a hump in the back and the their bottom area is much smaller and thinner than their shoulders and torso. So work on that just by squeezing it, rolling it in your hands, look at a picture and see if you can get it the way you like it. You'll also notice that they have these teeny little legs and with the way that we are working with clay, we're not going to realistically get these long skinny legs to hold up this giant amount of clay. So we are going to go for some smaller legs and you can just start by pinching and pulling it down. If you end up not having enough clay at the body, you could add a piece of clay by scoring and slipping, but try just pinching to make your legs and just know that sculpturally with our bison, the weight that he's carrying, we are not going to be able to get as long and thin legs as they really have. With your leftover clay, go ahead and cut some of it off with your wire tool. You're going to use part of that for making the head. Um, you can kind of hold it to your, your sculpture and see if it looks like you've got the right amount of clay or not. What I did with mine was use my hands to kind of form the basic shape of the head. And then I use the same technique that we just used for the feet by pulling out a kind of a base for the beard and the two horns. I'm not worrying a whole lot right now about the details. I'm just trying to get the basic shape and a nice base to attach it with. I can hold it to my sculpture and make sure it looks good. I decided to cut a big chunk of his face off because it really didn't look to me like quite like the right shape. The front of his head is a little flatter. So I went ahead and cut that off and now I'm taking the time to go along with my finger and smooth it out just a little bit more, although it's still going to need some more shaping after it's attached. And obviously the horns are going to be kind of a thin point, but beware of making them too long and too thin because that will make them more fragile. It's now time to go ahead and attach the head to the body and you can go ahead and start if you like with the toothbrush to get it roughed up with water and it's kind of the cheater score and slip but you can also go over it with the actual score and slip with your wooden tool and remember to do that you're going to say scoring is boring but I make lots of lines and you're going to form the lines along the back of the head and along the body where it's going to attach and then the next part is slipping is dipping but I like it just fine that's when you add the water of course your, your, you can use your finger to add the water or the toothbrush if you've already done that and then the last part is smoothing is soothing it erases the lines and you're gonna take your finger and try to make this head look like you didn't just add it on but like you maybe pulled it out just like with the feet and the horn. So just take your finger around there and try to smooth that clay in to where it blends in with the rest of the body and that will give it a lot of strength. You can also use a tool to reach the hard to get places. For the tail I'm going to roll a tiny little coil and attach it on by scoring and slipping and smoothing. Mm -hmm. Detail the little tuft of hair at the end of the tail. I'm going to use this wire tool that has multi wires and just add that texture along the bottom. Now for the fun part. So since our theme this quarter is contrast, think about the contrast that exists on the bison. He has the smooth part of his back, he's got the textured part with all that rough hair, and so what I'm doing on mine is kind of marking a line around where I think he looks more textured. And I'm gonna use that little wire tool um, you can use any of the little wooden stick tool and you can make the hair marks. You can make nostrils and eyes. What I ended up doing for the hair all along the body is using that wire, multi-wire tool a lot and just, just really roughing up 
that area of the clay. I don't have enough of these for everybody to have their own, so we will have to share. You can also use the toothbrush, would be good at making these kind of lines, maybe especially if it's drier, or there's the tool in the video you can see up to the left, that other kind of, oh, I'm using it now. <laughs> you can see this other tool, you can use that. Okay, so now this part is important because these guys are thick and we want them to be able to dry evenly and without cracking. And one way to prevent that is by taking out the excess clay. So you can use this wire loop tool to carve in to the underneath part of your bison and scrape out as much of that excess clay as you can. Notice how carefully I'm holding it in my left hand. You want to make sure that you don't carve through your carefully formed bison with that tool. Now for the fun part, we're going to take this extra clay that we've kind of carved from our bison, smush it back together, and put it in this tiny extruder. When you push it through, you're going to have this great little hair that comes out. And if you kind of just uh, scooch it together, you can score and slip with that toothbrush wherever you're going to add the buffalo's tuft of hair. And cut that off from the extruder and kind of squeeze it on. So it's going to be attached by kind of a combination of having been scored and slipped from the toothbrush, but also pressed down into there pretty well and smoothed, although you can't smooth it too much because you want to keep that texture. And that's it. That's the basics of making your bison. For the rest of the time I spent working on mine, I'm just adding a little more hair to the front, going back and kind of roughing up the texture as I've held on to him. It's kind of smoothed out where I wanted him to have more texture. Make sure that you put your initials on this. On the bottom, we're going to let them dry, and it'll take another week before they're bisque-fired. And then at that point, we'll come back through and glaze them.